So if we recall, the degrees, they're very easy. You just need to add and subtract 360 degrees, okay? Because both terminal angles, remember, are the angles that are in the same spot. We're just talking about going either multiple revolutions or going in the opposite direction. So we add or subtract an entire revolution, which is 360 degrees. That gives you two answers. For the radius, remember, we drop the pi. We add or subtract two. Turn it to a fraction, stick pi back in there. So this is actually uh, negative 16 pi to 7 is more than one revolution. So when you add 2 pi, you're still negative. So you get negative 2 pi to 7. Add it again to get positive 12 pi to 7. Uh, but I would also accept negative 30 pi to 7 for a negative coterminal angle if you just automatically subtract the two for the negative, okay? So, yes, yes, okay. As long as it's coterminal, I will accept it. It's just not the most efficient answer, okay? All right, uh, so what we're going to look at today, and we're going to come back to the idea of coterminal later on, uh, but right now we are going to review slash learn trick ratios. I'm assuming that you've seen these before, but I'm just going to go from scratch to make sure you know what we're talking about. So there are six trigonometric ratios we need to be familiar with. You're probably familiar with the first three, sine, cosine, and tangent. Now, I set up a right triangle here on purpose, and I labeled the sides because I think in the yellow trig a little bit before, uh, that was the most difficult part was identifying the opposite and the adjacent sides. If you're still struggling with that, wherever theta is or wherever the angle that you're talking about, notice one side will always be the hypotenuse, whether it's the angle down here or whether it's the angle up there, uh, we can even do three. Okay? Um, one side of the angle will always be created by the hypotenuse. The other side of the angle is what we call the adjacent angle. If you are adjacent to something, you are next to it. Okay? So the adjacent side uh, is the other side that forms that angle. The opposite side doesn't touch this angle at all. Okay? Notice this side over here has nothing to do with forming this angle. Um, and it is completely opposite from that angle. So, just a little relief uh, with that. The hypotenuse is, of course, always the top side of the right angle. Okay, so I'm assuming you know this, but just to make sure, sine of the angle is found by putting the opposite over the hypotenuse. Cosine is the adjacent over the hypotenuse, and tangent is the opposite over the adjacent. Now, what's most likely new to you are the other three. We've got cosecant, secant, and cotangent. We call these the reciprocal ratios. So these are the reciprocal trig ratios. So and I've got it set up that way. One over the sine is equal to the cosecant. So cosecant is the hypotenuse over the one over the cosine is equal to the secant. So secant can be found by putting the hypotenuse over the adjacent. And then finally we have the cotangent, which is the reciprocal of tangent. So it's the adjacent over the opposite. Now, uh, one thing that I use to help me to remember which one goes with which, notice um, the cos don't go together, okay? So cosecant does not go with cosine. Cosecant goes with sine. Secant goes with cosine. And tangent goes with tangent. That's the easy one. They go together. Uh, but you have, there's only one co in the pair. Sine and cosecant. Cosine and secant. That's how I remember which one goes with which. Okay. Uh, any questions about the setup here? All right. Let's look at some examples. Let's use this. If we know one trigonometric ratio, we can find the other five. We only have to know one in the Pythagorean theorem. Okay. We only have to know one in the Pythagorean theorem. So. Say, for example, we are told that the sine of the angle, we don't know what the angle is, I don't care what the angle is, that's not what we're looking for, is 5 over 6. I just want to list the ratios for the other five trig functions. So, I have a, uh, I have a triangle set up there so that we can uh, label it, so we can get that visual. 
And we know that the sine is the opposite over the hypotenuse. So the opposite is 5. The hypotenuse is 6. Okay, so you could have just as easily put theta in the other corner of the triangle, uh, but your 5 would have been the, the leg on the bottom if you had done that. Okay, so that's just kind of a side note. To find the other trig ratios, well, we also need the adjacent side. How do we find the adjacent side? Pythagorean theorem. Okay, so in this case, um, we are looking for, I'm going to call it A because it's the adjacent side. So A squared plus 5 squared equals 6 squared. So we've got 36 on one side, 25 on the left side. So that's going to give us A squared is equal to 11. And we subtract 36 minus 25. So that means that that adjacent side is equal to the square root of 11. Now, I did that in like two steps. If you need more, that's fine. Okay. I'm just trying to streamline this one. Okay, so we've already got sine. So I always try and go in the same order. Okay, so after sine comes cosine. And I'm just going to put the cosine of theta because I don't know the angle. I don't care what the angle is. That's not what I'm concerned about. I'm concerned about the ratios. So cosine is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. And we're just going to leave it. Tangent is the opposite, which is 5, over the adjacent, which is the square root of 11. Now, um, when we practice some of these problems and you look at the answer key, I tried to fix it so that we wouldn't run into this issue too much. Uh, really, we don't leave square roots in the denominator, but we're not going to get into rationalizing the denominator uh, right now. We'll talk about that more in pre-calculus. Or have, have we rationalized the denominator? Yes, we have. We've done that. I'm sorry. I'm getting all mixed up with the calculus. We've done that. So let's do that. Let's rationalize that denominator. Get rid of that square root of 11 in the bottom. So we get 5 square roots of 11 on top, and the square root of 11 times the square root of 11 is 11. Okay, so that's really how you should write that tangent ratio right there. Don't leave square roots in the box. All right, now let's go through our reciprocal functions. Cosecant is the reciprocal of sine, so just flip sine over. So cosecant is 6 over 5. Secant is the reciprocal of cosine, so we need to flip cosine over. So that becomes 6 over the square root of 11, and if we rationalize that, we get 6 square roots of 11 over 11. Pretty much. Pretty much. Cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent. Now, I'm not going to flip that final version over because if I do, I'm going to end up with the square root in the bottom. I'm going to go back to the first, when I first set up tangent right here and got 5 over the square root of 11, I'm just going to flip that version over so that I get the square root of 11 over 5. Okay, now, if you worked it out, the other one would end up simplifying to that, but it's just more work than you have to do. Okay, so those are our five situations. So get another one. Let's say that we are told that the secant is equal to 26 over 24. Now, I fully realize that 26 over 24 will simplify. Let's just leave it the way it is, though, because we're talking about the legs of a triangle. Secant is the reciprocal of cosine, so that means it's the hypotenuse over the adjacent. So our hypotenuse is 26, and the adjacent is 24. Now, another way to help you remember this is, remember the hypotenuse should always be the longest leg in your triangle. Always. The hypotenuse should always be the longest leg in your triangle. So if you had accidentally messed that up, if you had said that that was the adjacent over the hypotenuse and you labeled your triangle, you should look at that and say, well, uh, my hypotenuse is not the longest leg. Something's, something's up here. I need to fix this. All right. So in this case, we need to find the opposites. So 24 squared and O is not the best variable to use because it looks like a zero, but I'm going to roll with it right here. I do not know what 26 squared is right off the top of my head, nor do I know what 24 squared is. 26 
times 24, or 26 squared minus 24 squared is 100. So that's nice. That means our opposite is 10. Let's go read to do it this time. Sometimes that happens. All right, so let's start at the beginning. Sine. Okay, sine is the opposite over the hypotenuse. And I'm going to leave it. I know 10 over 26 reduces, but I'm going to leave it. Okay, cosine is the adjacent over the hypotenuse, or the reciprocal of secant. Tangent is the opposite over the adjacent. Sine, cosine, tangent. Then we've got cosecant. Cosecant is the reciprocal of sine. So flip sine over 26 over 10. Secant was what was given to us. And then cotangent, uh, flip over the tangent, 24 over 10. 